Okay, um, 6.7 now. Um, still on that using the fundamental theorem of algebra. We just got done doing all those rational zeros. But now we're doing this in reverse. Now it's saying right here that you have a negative 3. They're telling you a 0 is negative 3, a 0 is a positive 3, and a 0 is a negative 2. So, um, it says to graph you can use a graphing calculator to graph. I'm not going to spend my time graphing. I just want to show you how you can do this algebraically. They're basically saying that x equals negative 3. They're saying x equals 3. They're saying x equals negative 2. So you basically solve each of these. I add 3 to both sides to get x plus 3. I subtract 3 to both sides to get x minus 3. I add 2 to both sides to get x plus 2. Now, guess what? This is all multiplication. So I can distribute and FOIL and find my answer. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Three, 3 times x is 3x, and since it's positive, it's a plus and 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Uh, negative 3 and a positive 3 cancels. So really I have x squared minus 9 and all of that times that x plus 2. So now I have to do this again. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 2 is positive. It's positive 2x squared. Um, negative 9 times x is negative 9x, and negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. And really, right there is your answer. That is your graph right in there. If you wanted to graph that on your calculator and plug that in, you'll see that it crosses at negative 3, positive 3, and negative 2 as well. So you got x cubed, 2x squared, negative 9x minus 18 is your polynomial there. All right, the next one identical to that. They're saying your zeros are x equals 2. They're saying x equals 3, and x equals negative 1. I would minus 2 to both sides, right? So I end up getting x minus 2 for that one. I would minus 3 to both sides, so I end up getting x minus 3. I would add 1 to both sides, so I'd end up getting x plus 1. And now, let's FOIL all these bad boys. So x times x is x squared x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. When I combine those together, I get x squared. Those are negative 5x when I put them together. And a positive 6. There's that. I bring down the x plus 1 because I didn't use that yet. So now I have to FOIL again. Uh, so x squared times x, I get x cubed. x squared times 1 is plus x squared. Negative 5x times x is negative 5x squared. Negative 5x times 1 is negative 5x. And 6 times x is 6x. X. 6 times 1 is 6. So let me just uh, simply uh, erase some stuff up here so I have some room to actually write my answer for you. Um, so here we go. I have an x cubed, because that's all that I have. So that's gone. x squared and negative 5x squared is negative 4x squared. So that's all gone. Negative 5x plus 6x is positive x. So that's gone. And all I have left is a plus 6. And once again, you can graph that and see that's where it crosses. This is your answer. That's your equation. Just graph that, and that will show you where your answer is. 
Um, write a polynomial function of degree with least degree that has real coefficients. The given zeros and the coefficients are all there. Uh, basically, all this is saying is a different way. This, remember, is your x coordinate and your y coordinate. That's your x coordinate and your y coordinate. That's your x coordinate and your y coordinate. That's just telling you the coordinates where it crosses. As in, what it's saying is, whatever this graph is, it crosses at 2, which is right there. It crosses at negative 2, which is right there. And it crosses at 1, which are your answers. So for all we know, the graph looks like this. Or maybe the graph looks like this. Or for some weird reason, there's even more points that we don't know about. And the graph goes and spirals around, hits through that point. Goes down here, makes a weird design and comes up through. Probably not what's going to happen. But anyway, the point is, nonetheless, all the same. Um, that's like saying x equals 2, x equals negative 2, x equals 1. So just like the last problems, I subtract 2 to get x minus 2 as an answer. I add 2 to both sides, so I end up getting x plus 2 as an answer. And I subtract 1 to get x minus 1. And I have no idea what happened here. It's supposed to be an x. So x times x is x squared. x times 2 is a positive 2x. Uh, that's a negative 2x, and that is a negative 4. Those cancel out. So really, I just have x squared minus 4 times x minus 1 that I have to FOIL. x squared times x is x cubed. Um, x squared times negative x is negative x squared. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x and negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 and there is your answer. So if you wanted to you could graph that but those are your answers as well. The next problem is the same. Um, this is like saying x equals negative 3, x equals 0, x equals 5. Um, so what this is saying is I'd add 3 to get x plus 3 as a factor. This one's saying that I, have, I would subtract 5 to get x minus 5. And I have an x out in front. That just means I put an x there. So this is what I'm supposed to basically distribute. I am going to quickly put this through. x squared uh, minus 5x plus 3x minus 15. And when I combine it together, I get x squared minus 2x minus 15. Okay. Um, however, remember, I still have that x out in front. So now I need to distribute that through to get my final answer, which is x cubed. And when I distribute that through, I get negative 2x squared. And I get negative 15x. Um, I hope that that helped on how to work backwards, I guess, to solve them. Um, but either way, writing a, pro a polynomial is a product of linear factors. That's what we have been doing. So you can do that. Um, and now all that's saying is solving some of the equations that we've already uh, worked on before. Um, and when we come back, we can take another little closer look at those as well.